వందనాలు దైవాశీస్సులు పలుకుతున్నాను ప్రియ మిత్రులారా ఇప్పుడు మీ ముందు మేము ప్రజెంట్ చేస్తున్నటువంటి ఈ యొక్క చర్చ నాకు బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ అనే ఒక ముస్లిం పండితుని మధ్యలో జరిగింది వారు ముస్లిం పండితులు అనే మాట నేను హృదయపూర్వకంగానే చెబుతున్నాను వారు చాలా గొప్ప పండితులు గొప్ప సమర్థులైనటువంటి తార్కికులు వారు ఇంగ్లీష్లో అదే మాట చెప్పాను హీజ్ ఎ గుడ్ ఆర్గ్యుమెంటేటర్ ఎ గుడ్ డిబేటర్ బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ ఈజ్ అ రియల్ స్కాలర్ అని చెప్పా ఇంగ్లీష్లో కూడా నిజంగా పండితులు వారు ప్రముఖ ఇస్లామిక్ అపాలజిస్ట్ అయినటువంటి మహమ్మద్ దీదాత్ గారు చాలా మహానుభావులు ప్రపంచవ్యాప్తంగా గొప్ప పెను సంచలనం మహమ్మద్ దీదాత్ గారు వారి శిష్యులన్నమాట వారి ఆశిస్సులు పొందినటువంటి ముస్లిం అపాలజిస్ట్ బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ గారు వారు నన్ను పిలిచారు బైబిల్ దేవుని వాక్యమా లేక ఖురాన్ దైవ గ్రంథము దేవుని వాక్యమా బైబిల్ ఆ ఖురాన్ ఏది దైవ గ్రంథం ఏది దేవుని వాక్యం అని ఆ క్వశ్చన్ మీద డిబేట్ చేయడానికి తర్కించడానికి చర్చించడానికి నన్ను క్రైస్తవుల పక్షంగా మాట్లాడడానికి బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ గారు పిలిచారు నేను సంతోషంగా ఆ ఛాలెంజ్ని ఆహ్వానాన్ని స్వీకరించాను ఖురానే దేవుని వాక్యం అంటూ ఇమ్రాన్ గారు మాట్లాడారు మేమలాగ ఒప్పుకోము బైబిలే దేవుని వాక్యమని మేము నమ్ముతున్నామని క్రైస్తవుల విశ్వాసాన్ని నేను ప్రకటించాను టోటల్గా ఈ డిబేట్ అంతా కూడా నాలుగున్నర గంటలు పైగా జరిగింది హైదరాబాద్లోని పబ్లిక్ గార్డెన్స్లో లలిత కళా తోరణం అనే ప్రాంగణంలో జరిగింది దాదాపు ఇరవై వేల మంది పైగా ముస్లిం సోదరులు వచ్చారు అందరి ముందు బైబిలే ఎందుకు దేవుని వాక్యమని మనం నమ్ముతున్నాము ఎందుకు అలా నమ్మాల్సి వస్తుందో మనకున్న ఎవిడెన్సెస్ అండ్ ప్రూఫ్స్ మనం నేను అందరి ముందు ఉంచగలిగాను నాలుగున్నర గంటల పాటు జరిగినటువంటి ఆ డిబేట్ని తర్వాత ఎవరో కొంతమంది అప్లోడ్ చేశారు నేను ఎప్పుడు బిజీగా ఉంటాను దేశంలో విదేశాల్లో ఎప్పుడు పర్యటనలు కనుక ఇది ప్రజెంట్ చేయడంలో నేను అప్లోడ్ చేయడంలో కొంచెం ఆలస్యమైంది ఈ లోపల ఎవరో కొందరు మిత్రులు అప్లోడ్ చేశారు ఆ నాలుగున్నర గంటల వాదాన్ని కుదించి నేను చెప్పిన జవాబులు నేను చెప్పిన వాదాలు కట్ చేసేసి ఇస్లామిక్ ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ను మాత్రమే ప్రమోట్ చేస్తూ ఫేవర్ చేస్తూ క్రిస్టియన్స్ ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ని నా ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ని కట్ చేసి మరి దానికి గ్రహణం పట్టించినట్టు దాన్ని కప్పేసి కమ్మి వేసి బయటికి రానివ్వకుండా ఎడిటెడ్ వర్షన్ని అప్లోడ్ చేశారు అది చాలామంది దాన్ని చూసి ఏమనుకున్నారంటే ఓఫీర్ గారు ఓడిపోయారు అని అనుకున్నారు అది ఎన్నడూ జరగదు జరగలేదు జరగబోదు ఓఫీర్ గారు ఓడిపోయారని అనుకోవడానికి కారణం ఇంకోటి కూడా ఏంటంటే ఆ టోటల్ డిబేట్ అంతా కూడా ఇంగ్లీష్లోనే జరిగింది ఇంగ్లీష్ అర్థం కాని సోదరులు కొంతమంది ఆ అపోహ ప్రచారం మొదలుపెట్టారు మొత్తం నేను ఇమ్రాన్ గారు ఇంగ్లీష్లో మాట్లాడుకున్నాం ఇంగ్లీష్ అర్థమే కాని వాళ్ళు బయలుదేరి ఓఫీర్ గారు ఓడిపోయాడు అని ఎందుకంటే మేము ఇద్దరం కలబడి కొట్టుకోలేదు కాబట్టి ఇద్దరం సంస్కారవంతులు బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ గారు చదువుకున్నవారు సంస్కారం ఉన్నవారు సజ్జనులు నేను కాస్త కూర్చో చదువుకున్న సంస్కారం ఉంటుండి తాతల నాటి నుండి పండిత వంశం మాది మేము కొట్టుకోవడం అనే ప్రసక్తి రాదు మేము కలబడి కొట్టుకోలేదు కాబట్టి డిబేట్ విఫలం అయిపోయింది ఓఫీర్ గారు ఓడిపోయారు అని కొంతమంది దౌర్భాగ్యులు ప్రచారం చేశారు మరో విషయం ఏంటంటే అసలు ఓఫీర్ గారు ఓడిపోయాడా లేదా లేక గెలిచాడా సమర్థవంతంగా క్రైస్తవుల పక్షంగా మాట్లాడాడా అని తెలియాలంటే నేను చెప్పిన ఆన్సర్స్ అన్నీ ఉండాలి కదా నెట్లో ఆ కొరతను ఇన్నాళ్ళకి మేము తీర్చగలుగుతున్నాం ఇప్పుడు అందరూ వినండి మొత్తం టోటల్గా ఏ మాత్రం కూడా ఒక పొల్లైన అక్షరమైనా కట్ చేయకుండా తొలగించకుండా జరిగింది జరిగినట్లు యథాతథంగా మొత్తం ఆ వేదిక మీద ఏం జరిగిందో టోటల్ వర్షన్ని మీ ముందు ప్రజెంట్ చేస్తున్నా మీరందరూ వినండి ఎవరు ఓడిపోయారు ఎవరు గెలిచారు ఎవరు తమ వాదాన్ని సమర్థవంతంగా వినిపించగలిగారు 
మీకు తెలుస్తుంది ఈ ఇరుపక్షాల వాదనలు మీరు విని విన్నాక మీ అంతటా మీరు నిర్ణయించుకోండి ఖురాన్ దేవుని వాక్యమని నమ్మాలని మీకు అనిపిస్తే అదే నమ్మండి బైబిల్ దేవుని వాక్యమని రంజిత్ తోఫిర్ గారు చెప్పిన వాదనే సబబుగా నమ్మదగినదిగా ఉన్నది అనిపిస్తే మీరు బైబిల్ని నమ్మండి నిర్ణయ అధికారం మీకుంది నిర్ణయ అధికారం మీకే ఉంది కానీ మేమిద్దరము కూడా మా మా వాదాలు మాకు చేతనైనంత వరకు సమర్థవంతంగా మీ ముందు ఉంచుతున్నాం ఇది నాకు బ్రదర్ ఇమ్రాన్ గారికి జరిగినటువంటి డిబేట్ చూడండి సత్యాన్ని గ్రహించండి దేవుడు మిమ్మల్ని ఆశీర్వదించును గాక గాడ్ బ్లెస్ యూ గ్రీటింగ్స్ టు ఎవ్రీబడి ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ హూ ఈస్ వాచింగ్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఐ బ్రింగ్ బ్లెస్సింగ్స్ అపాన్ యూ ఇన్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ జీసస్ ఐఎమ్ హ్యాపీ టు ప్రజెంట్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ దిస్ డిబేట్ బిఫోర్ యూ ఆఫ్టర్ అ లాంగ్ టైమ్ this debate took place between me and brother imran a muslim scholar a real scholar and he is a trusted disciple of the great uh, ahmad didat the great muslim apologist uh, so this uh, brother imran carries that knowledge and that uh, version of his faith and he is a very able argumentator able debater and unfortunately he doesn't know telugu he can't speak in telugu so he invited me to debate with him on the question whether bible is the word of god or the quran is the word of god is bible the word of god or quran the word of god that was the point of debate and i have uh, gladly agreed to argue on the side of the christian society christian community it is a christian's faith that the bible is the word of god so i have presented my argument and brother imran presented his side of argument he said bible cannot be the word of god quran only can be the word of god so brother imran tried to do justice to his faith and brother ranjit tofir that's me i tried to do justice to my faith and that was a long lengthy debate it went on for more than four and a half hours and i had answered every question raised by brother imran and i have presented my argument my reasons my proofs my evidences because of which we believe that bible is the word of god and uh, no argument of ranjit tofir was answered effectively by brother imran and brother ranjit tofir had effectively efficiently eminently answered every objection every criticism raised by brother imran there was not a single question which brother ranjit could not answer and the whole debate went on very peacefully in a loving understanding pleasant atmosphere and the police officials who were there to maintain the peace maintain the order they said the whole credit goes to brother ranjit tofi because he was very much composed and he could not uh, he did not lose his patience he maintained the cool atmosphere and uh, they said uh, we have to congratulate brother ranjit tofi for maintaining this uh, debate in such a wonderful atmosphere and after that debate happened naturally i am a very busy man i am moving all over india and abroad we could not upload the total version the total version of uh, the debate in the internet meanwhile some other people have uploaded their version of the debate they have done lot of editing cutting short cutting out of the answers given by me they had tried to present that debate 
doing only favor uh, towards the Islamic argument and not doing any kind of justice to Christian argument presented by Ranjit Tofir. And just because the debate did not end up in a fight, in a quarrel, some people began to say that Ranjit Tofir lost the argument, he lost the debate. He was defeated in the debate. That's a very big global international joke. Ranjit Ophir is never defeated in any debate till this date. Never, never, never. Actually, the whole debate took place in English. And so many people who didn't know English were uh, propagating that I lost the debate. The debate was in English. The questions and answers were in English. People who did not understand English, they began to propagate the false news that Ranjit Ophir lost the debate. I wanted to upload the total version without cutting off, without editing even a single letter. So now, after such a long time, I am here before you presenting the total un abridged, unedited version of the debate between me and Brother Imran. Brother Imran was arguing that Quran alone can be the word of God. And I was arguing that the Bible is the word of God. And I had offered my evidences which Brother Imran could not condemn, could not disprove. He could not prove my evidences to be wrong. So kindly go through this debate and see uh, who had presented their argument rightly, wisely or justifiably. And you decide for yourself what is really the word of God. Is it the so-called Quran Sharif or the Holy Bible? May God bless you. May God bless you. step into the session I would like to read out few important rules to all of you the first all the audience should be very clear that this debate is not a battleground or a match where any party giving their presentation are to be rewarded as winner or judged as loser this debate is but natural an educational presentation in order to put forward the viewpoints of two major most religions of the world and discuss about each other's belief in the Bible and the Quran. MashaAllah, IREF and RKP as combined organizers of this debate feel proud to be living in a beautiful country like India whose soil has a pluralistic society and where the law of our land India provides us a fair provision to peacefully gather people and discuss the points of agreement and disagreement without forcing our opinion upon each other and being justified by discussing the subject with evidences. Respecting the law of this land, India, I request all of you not to get emotional or sentimental and then react in a way that may invite unnecessary problems for your illegal behavior. Slogans are strictly prohibited. If the audience feel like appreciating any point of the speaker, they can applaud, but not shout any slogans. I would like to reiterate this point. Slogans are not allowed. Applaud is permitted. Nobody is allowed to inter interrupt the speakers during their complete speech. 
Anyone who feels right or wrong about any statement given in the speech by any speaker, then you get a fair chance in the question and answer session to clarify your question. But you cannot interrupt the speakers during their speeches. The rules for the question and answer session shall be read out before its commencement. Being the master of conduct of this session, I am authorized to add or amend any of the above rules. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of this evening's debate is the Bible or the Quran, which is the God's word. A common man might answer this question, which is the God's word, by either replying that I think that both Bible and the Quran are the God's word. Or he might say that both Bible and the Quran are not the God's word. Or he might say that only Bible is the God's word. Or he might say only Quran is the God's word. As a Muslim, sincerely adhering to the original standards of all evidences, I proclaim proudly that Quran is the only 100% verbatim word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to give any answer except the answer I gave or the option I selected, to believe any other scripture to also be the God's word would be as wrong as believing the reply of 1 plus 0 instead of 1 as a little number less than 1 or a little number greater than 1. In short, if somebody is given an equation 1 plus 0, the only answer for that is 1. If anybody reduces that number or increases that number, in both the cases the answer is wrong. Similarly, to believe any other scripture except the glorious Quran to be the 100% verbatim word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also be wrong. But then, why do I not believe the Bible to be the God's word? I would request Pastor Anjit Ophir to kindly help me in discussing this subject to my audience, I would like Pastor Anjit Ophir to kindly pronounce a seven-lettered word to all the audience here. And the spelling of the word is B A S T A R D. To make it more clear, B for Bush, A for always, S for certain, T for terrorist, A for ambushed, R for rebuked, and D for dog. I request also Ophir to kindly pronounce this word to my audience. That's all. Whether I agree with the full form of that uh, abbreviation, so-called abbreviation, it, it can be pronounced as uh, bastard. And then I leave it to all my decent audience to believe or not to believe that can this word be used by the Almighty God? In our society, if any common man abuses another man without a genuine reason by calling this word, he can be booked under the Indian section 500. He can be punished for it. But that word occurs in the Bible for no less than three different times. Not once, 
not twice thrice it occurs in the bible believed to be the word of god or take it it occurs in the bible only three times i'm asking can the almighty god speak this language and if somebody says that the translators in english they have mistranslated that word somebody suppose they say that in the originals i put the originals in inverted commas in the original manuscript this is not the correct word for it so i would like to give the evidence from the strong's reference dictionary from hebrew to english and greek to english the hebrew word for the that if in the english word is man zare and man zare if translated would only be b a s t a r d and in greek the word is nothos and nothos according to the strong reference dictionary if translated into english it would only be b a s t a r d in both the cases the right translation is b a s t a r d and this word occurs in the bible in the old testament twice and in the new testament one time in the old testament in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 23 verse number 2 god says and the b a s t a r d shall not enter the temple of god shall not enter the services of the god it occurs again in the book of zechariah chapter number 9 verse number 6 and in the new testament in the greek original manuscript it occurs in the book of hebrews chapter number 12 verse number 28 these are the three different places where this word occurs therefore i strongly believe that this word can never be used by the almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala it has to be by some historian or some other human being but this word can never be the word of almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala therefore the bible is not the god's word but then but then what is the bible bible is derived from the greek word biblos and biblos it means a library of books or a collection of books and this bible is a collection of different books basically categorized as the books of old testament and as the books of the new testament and then the bibles are different but as i have come to learn that pastor ofil follows the word of god of the protestant church that has only 66 books therefore the topic of my debate would be more centralized on the protestant bible whereas the catholic bible has 73 books that is seven books more than the protestant bible which the protestants do not believe to be the word of god the old testament is believed unanimously by both the jews and the christians to be a revelation from almighty god and the first five books of the old testament of the bible genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy are believed unanimously again by both the jews and the christians to have been written down by moses may peace be upon him by hazrat musa alaihi salam on the authority of the almighty god which again i disagree the reason the bible does not stand as a proof to this claim the bible itself does not agree that moses is the author of the first five books neither does the bible agree that the almighty god is the author of these books how can i prove it if you read the first five books of the old testament at random open it anyway the first five books and you will come across about 700 statements 
about 700 statements that are an evidence that they are not a revelation from Almighty God, neither have they been written by Moses, may peace be upon him. For example, the statements are, and Moses said unto the God, and God said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the God, the God said unto Moses. If God revealed it to Moses, the statement should be, I said unto Moses, and Moses said unto me. It cannot be, God said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the God. This statement does not occur once. At random open any of the five books, you will come across more than 700 times that a third person is speaking there. And still if somebody, they say, no, no, this is not a genuine reason to disbelieve that the Old Testament or the first five books are not the revelation from Almighty God. So I will have to give another example. And this example is so simple that my eldest daughter, almost eight years old, even, even she will easily understand that this is not a revelation from Almighty God. Now what is that example? The fifth book of the Old Testament, that is the book of Deuteronomy, ends on chapter number 34. When you open chapter number 34 and read verse number 5, 6, 7 and 8, easy, this is not the book that I wrote it, this is not a book written by the Muslims, this is what sir believes to be the word of God, this is what the Christians believe to be the word of God. I want my Christian friends, if they have brought their Bibles, to kindly open the Bible and check the reference. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 34, verse number 5, 6, 7 and 8. Very easy reference to remember. How do you remember it? After 3, you get 4 as the number. 34, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And the verses are, And Moses died in the land of Moab. Can you imagine? Moses is getting a revelation and Moses is writing that Moses died in the book, land of Moab and he, that is the Almighty God, and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab and Moses was 120 years old when he died. How can Moses write this? How can Moses write and say that Moses died in the land of Moab and he that is God buried him in the land of Moab and that Moses was 120 years old when he died. Therefore, this cannot be the word of God. And if one statement is removed from the word of God, by God, it can never be the 100% verbatim word of God. Therefore, I believe that the Bible is not the God's word. Then, if you read the Bible, you will come across a history of a great prophet. We Muslims to revere that prophet. We call him Hud alayhi salam. Surah Hud of the glorious Quran is Surah number 11. Hud alayhi salam, who is referred in the Bible in the Old Testament as Prophet Judah. And this Prophet Judah is also the father of the Jewish people. Judaism and the Jews, they got their name as Judaism and Jew from this prophet, Prophet Judah. He lived in a place by the name Judea. There is a very amazing story in the word of God. This story, I would like to put it not to the criteria of the Quran of judging which is the God's word, but to the very criteria of the Bible itself to judge how the God's word should be. If you read second book of Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 16, verse number 1 and 6, it says, for any scripture to be breathed by the God, if God has breathed the scripture, meaning if it is the word of God, it shall be applicable for doctrine, it should have a good lesson in it, or a rebuke, meaning if you have done something, something wrong, immediately you should be punished for it. Third is correctness, you should be corrected if you have made an error. And the fourth is instruction to the righteousness. 
I would like to repeat the reference for Pastor Ophi to open it up. Second book of Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 16. Four criterias. Now let us see the story that I am going to tell all of you now, whether it fits this standard of the Bible itself or not. Prophet Judah and his story is mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number 38, verse number 1 to verse number 30. The story says, history says about this mighty prophet of God, Nauz Billah, may Allah forbid, that Judah had three sons by the name Er, Onan and Shelah. Judah married his eldest son to a woman by the name Tamar. And this fellow, Er, the eldest son of Judah, according to the Bible, was a wicked person. So when he went to consume the marriage, God slew him. As if God did not have any other time to slay him. At that very spot, he was about to consume the marriage, God slew him. And he was killed. Ask any Christian, Sir, what is the lesson there? The lesson is from 2 Timothy. You see, rebuke. He was a wicked person, God slew him. Good. Then the story continues that according to the tradition, according to the custom there, Judah married his second son to his widowed daughter-in-law. Onan was married to the same woman, the same widow. And this Onan, he thought that if I beget a child, if DNA is done in that time and that child belongs to me, if he is my child, why should he be given the name of my deceased brother? He felt jealous. God became angry. God slew him. Ask any Christian, what is the lesson, sir? He would say, see, he was jealous. God gave him the punishment. He was slew. Very good. The story continues now. Judah tells to his daughter-in-law, Tamar. You see, Tamar, my third son is too young to get married to you. You return back to your father's home. When he grows up, I will call you back and I will get you married to my third son, Shelah. When the third son grew up, Judah thought as a father that even my third son will die if I marry this third son to Tamar who looks to be of ill omen. So he cheats her. He forgets the promise. The prophet of God forgets the promise. He does not marry Tamar but he marries his third son to some other woman. So when Tamar comes to, know, comes to know about this, she said, I will surely take a revenge against my father-in-law. How does she take the revenge? So the Bible tells us, it's not what I say, it's not what the Muslims say, it's not what the Quran says, it's what your Bible says, sir. It says, Tamar, she played a harlot. What is a harlot? Herlot, according to the Oxford Dictionary, it means a prostitute. She plays a prostitute. And she says that when my father-in-law will pass to shear the sheep on this land, what I am going to do is, I will play a herlot and ask him to commit fornication with me. When Judah was passing Naus Billah, prophet of God, he sees the daughter-in-law but does not recognize according to the Bible, she was covering the face. So what he does is, he goes to her and he says, what should I give you to come in unto you? What should I pay you for that? So Tamar, the daughter-in-law, she says, a kid from the flock of the sheep. So he says, done, agreement is over, I'll pay. But Tamar says, what is the trust? What is the guarantee that you'll pay me? So he asks, what guarantee do you want? She says, I want the ring, the staff, and your, your ring, your staff, as a sign that you will not mistrust me. He gives it away, and the Bible says, it reports, Judah went in unto her, and she conceived But you see, New International Version. In the New International Version, I think it's kept down there. The Bible translators have become bold now. They thought that the people are not understanding it properly. They say, he had sexual intercourse with her. 
and she conceived. Whom did she conceive? Faraz was a child whom she conceived. And this Faraz, why did I say all this story? Do you know? This Faraz in Gospel of Matthew, who is Faraz? Born out of illegal sexual intercourse between the father-in-law and the daughter-in-law. This Faraz is put in the New Testament in the first book of Matthew. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number one, verse number three, to become the father of Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. Now, Billah, to a man, to a prophet who had no father, they gave a father in the Bible who is from an illegitimate progeny. Therefore, I say, this cannot be the God's word. God cannot speak all this. I will continue to ask our Christian friends, what is the lesson here? According to your Bible, it's not a doctrine. It's not a rebuke. Why is it not a rebuke? The verses do not continue after that. After she conceived, and the names of the children, God didn't say, I will slay you. God didn't say, Judah, I will kill you. Judah realizes himself, oh, I am a great sinner. So he seeks forgiveness, which is a greater sin. Only to be jealous or commit fornication. Committed fornication, God doesn't become angry. No doctrine, no moral. What is the moral here? And the Christian don't want to answer it. According to the standards of the Bible, the Bible does not fit to be the word of God. And this is not the one case there. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35, there is a case of incest. Even this is an incest. What is an incest? Incest means illegal sexual relationship between close blood relatives, like the father and the daughters, brothers and the sisters, sons and the mothers. If you read Genesis chapter number 19, verse number 35, there is a case of incest between daughters seducing their father. They give the father, Father Lot, Luth al according to the Bible, they invite him with intoxication, and then the eldest daughter, she commits fornication with her father. She says, there is no man here, and she commits a fornication. Then what she does is, she encourages the younger sister. And she says, my sister, why don't you also try the same thing? Tonight, you make our father drink, and then you have the sexual intercourse with her. Book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35. Book of Genesis, chapter number 35, verse number 22. Between mother and the sons. Book of 2 Samuel. Between brothers and the sisters. There are cases of incest altogether in the Old Testament. I'm asking, does God speak these things to his people? What is the doctrine there? What is the moral there? And the answer is, you see, this is mentioned in the Bible so that other people don't do it. I mean, as a father, I honestly ask my Christian friends, as a father, as an elder brother, as a husband, would you allow your women at home to read these stories? Would you allow them that they should believe that the prophets of God were people who committed incest? And I challenge Pastor Ranjit of you, I challenge him to read out slowly in simple English from the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 23, not all the verses, only verse number 3, verse number 8, and verse number 20 and 21. I challenge him to read it out to the audience here. Book of Ezekiel, <laughs> chapter number 23, verse number 3, verse number 8, verse number 20, and verse number 21. Not more, not less. I challenge him to read it out. And I'm sure if he's a decent person, he will never read it out. Therefore, I believe that the Bible cannot be the God's word. Moreover, there are versions of the Bible. Versions. What are versions? So the Christian friend tells us, and I'm sure Pastor Ophir will do it in his speech. He has brought two different translations of the Quran. So he's going to say, this is a version of the Quran, this is a version of the Quran. But no sir, they are not versions of the Quran. They are only different translations of the Quran. 
What is the difference between a version and a translation? The difference between a version and a translation is translation can be done by the translators by selecting different choice of words. Words can be different. A different translator selects a particular word and he translates it. But what is a version? According to the Oxford Dictionary, version means the change in the original language. The change in the original language. That is a version. And the Bible has undergone several changes in the originals. The first King James Version, believed to be by the Protestants, to be the authorized version of the Bible, as though it was the revealed word of God, was first printed in 1611. The version came after that. 1881. Another version came after that. 1952. Another version, 1971. Another version, 1980s. By now, Pastor will be in a better position to say how many versions have come. And yet, and yet, the Christians believe the word of God has not been changed. I will give an example. The great, great, great grandfather of a pastor writes a will and the great, great grandfather of the pastor changes that will and the testament. And the grandfather makes another major change in that will and the testament. And the father, he makes another major change in that testament and will. And this person also makes another major change in that will. Yet he believes that what he has as the will today is the same that was laid down by his great, great, great grandfather. Wallah, we Muslims take a very serious notice of making the message of the Quran to be protected. I challenge any Christian who is here, I challenge, not offensively, but educationally, I challenge any Christian sitting here, including Pastor Ophir, to read out all the names of the books given in the Bible. Alhamdulillah, my daughter, only eight years, she read out all the surahs in the Quran. We take a serious note to protect the revealed message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you honestly analyze the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned very clearly in the Quran. In Surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3 and number 78, with which I started my talk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa inna minhum la fariqin yalwuna al sinatihim litahasaduhu min al kitab wa inna minhum min al kitabi al sinatihim litahasaduhu min al kitab wa ma huwa min al kitab and among them, among the Jews and the Christians are some people who distort the book so that you think that this book is from the book Whereas it is not from the book. And they say about Allah, and they say, this is from Allah, whereas it is not from Allah. And they say about Allah a lie. And they know it very well. To conclude the talk, I leave it to Pastor Ophir to make clear. Why Moses, peace be upon him, wrote his own obituary. Obituary, you know, the stone that is put on the grave. Before dying, he wrote it down. And it is still revealed from God. Then, I would like to know, what are the morals of those lessons in the Bible? Not according to your interpretation, sir. I want the interpretation from the Bible. Where is the correction and morals given in the Bible for those lessons? And third, can you, God use that Dirty, filthy, B A S T A R D word. And fourth, I leave the challenge open to you so that the people know the Bible that you read as the word of God. If you have taken up the challenge, 
to read out the book of Ezekiel chapter number 23 verse number 3 verse number 8 verse number 20 and verse number 21 so that all the people sitting here the Christians and the non-Christians know what the word of God is I hope I concluded very well for you to assimilate the points Waqir al-Dawana and Alhamdulillah Rabbilah my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> Namaste. Praise the Lord. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to appreciate the presentations of uh, the children of my brother Imran. It was so wonderful to see those children learning the word of God and uh, being brought up in godly manners by the blessed mother and father and it is not a wonder little wonder that uh, the eldest daughter has such a wonderful memory power because my brother imran is of no little intelligence he is a great brilliant man uh, at a very young age he he knows greek arabic and sanskrit and uh, all these languages so I appreciate, I take it as a cause of pride that I can share this uh, platform along with my beloved brother, Brother Imran. And I thank uh, the IREF for giving me this uh, privilege of sharing this platform with Brother Imran. And I am really fascinated at his commitment for truth, commitment for uh, finding the real truth of God and following it and proclaiming it. I appreciate him and I praise God for this wonderful opportunity given unto me. He has thrown before me some challenges and raised some questions which I can very well answer and explain. But if I do that, I will not be able to share with you what God has kept in my heart. So I will come to his questions at the end of my discourse. At the outset, I want to tell you that this is not a debate between a Christian and a Muslim. This is a debate between a Muslim and a Muslim. Because I consider myself a Muslim too. Thank you. I am a Muslim because Muslim is a person who practices Islam as the style of life and Islam in Arabic means a life of total submission to God and Mr. Imran is a person totally submitted to God's will and I consider myself also a man totally submitted to do God's will so you can call me a Christian Muslim or maybe I am a Muslim And uh, Abraham in the Bible, he offered his son as a sacrifice to the God Almighty. Intelligently, I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding the name of that son, you know. It, it will stir up another controversy. But that son, whoever it was, Abraham was willing to offer his son. So he was a Muslim. He was submissive to God's will. And the Bible says Jesus also was totally submissive to God's will. He came to do God's will, so Jesus also was a Muslim. I, I appreciate it and I confess it. And I tell all my Christian brothers and sisters, if you want to be a real Christian, you also have to be a real Muslim. Thank you. So, actually there is no dispute when uh, my beloved brothers, brother Mansoor and brother Afak, they have come to my house to request me to take part in this debate. I gave them a letter in writing 
and uh, I am sure the IREF office management has this letter copy. I said in my letter, if the topic is the Bible or the Quran which is God's word, if that is the topic, I said, why the Rashtriya Kaistava Parishad believe that every religious book, holy book has the word of God, as such there is no dispute. We believe the Bible is the word of God and also Quran has the word of God and we honor both the books and we follow both the books and we study both the books. So as for me, there is no dispute at all. But still, because they have insisted on the topic, I said, okay, I'll be glad to see my, Christ my Christian brothers and Muslim brothers, Christian sisters and Muslim sisters sitting together to discuss about the true way to reach God. So my brothers and sisters, first of all, I want to emphasize on one thing, that such debates are the need of the hour. We need to have such debates. Many Muslim friends and Christian brothers also, they called me, they spoke to me over the phone, and said, no, no, Brother Ranjit, you should not be engaging in these debates. The Christianity doesn't uh, uh, agree or allow or permit such debates, but this will stir up a communal riots, disturbances. No, no, not at all, not at all. This is not a quarrel. This is a discussion between two brothers. And in the Holy Quran, in the glorious Quran, I use that word consciously. In the glorious Quran, Surah number 5, verses 82 and 83, it is said that Christians are the closest in affection, in love to Muslims. For a Muslim, the most dreadful enemy or hostile enemy is the Jew. For a Muslim, the worst enemy is a Jew and a pagan idolaters. But the closest relative and brother is the Christian. So my Christian brothers and sisters, you must know that we are here with our closest relatives. My Muslim brothers and sisters, I tell you, I come before you as your closest relative. I'm your brother speaking to you. Thank you very much. So there is no such tension here. We are all sitting here as brothers and sisters to share what I feel and hear what you feel. Now, why these debates? The need of the debate arises from the fact that intelligent questions have been raised by the scholars of both the religions, both the communities, I repeat, intelligent questions, intelligent objections have been raised by the scholars of both the communities regarding the other religion. Muslim scholars have raised many questions like the questions raised by my brother Imran right now. Many Muslim scholars, the great Ahmad Didat and other great Muslim scholars, they have raised many, many intelligent questions against the Bible or questioning the authenticity of the Bible. And Christian scholars have come up with intelligent answers also. And vice versa. Christian scholars have raised many intelligent questions about Islam and many Muslim scholars have come up with very good, convincing, intelligent answers. Christian scholars have questions about Islam. Islam has answers. Islamic scholars have questions about Christianity and they have answers. So there should be a common platform to talk like this. I want to hear your intelligent answers and share my intelligent answers so together we can know the truth in a better way, in a deeper way and live closer to God. Such debates help 
to build up communal harmony rather than creating a communal right unless we are uncivilized uneducated uncivilized like that no no we are all good people civilized people we are all the cream of the society i'm excited to see this wonderful congregation each and every one of us is a gem of the society so none of us is getting emotional we are all enjoying this discussion so in a positive way now i will proceed to tell you as christians why we believe the bible is the word of god now i come to my topic my subject and i think i have been given uh, half an hour and i finished 10 minutes now okay exactly it's okay i have uh, calculatedly i have done that because i need only 10 to 12 15 minutes to share my uh, discourse i am very calculative on that as my brother imran quoted about ezekiel 18th chapter genesis 19th chapter and all those things i humbly submit as my brother mansoor has mentioned introduced me to you that i have read the bible 114th time and i have read ezekiel 18 also 114 times and also genesis 19 chapter also i read 114 times and we have got our explanation for that we have got our reasons it's not that we do not know what is written in ezekiel 18 or we do not know uh, genesis 19 chapter my brother has pleased me by asking all those questions because he spoke exactly as i expected i knew my muslim brothers have these objections i knew it so i praise god that he came up with the uh, exactly the argument which i expected now i will come to that later first i will be positive in my approach i will i will always always be positive only i will never be aggressive or hurting anyone because as a christian as the quran says i am the closest to you in love and affection i don't want to hurt anyone i really love my brother imran whatever comes out of this discussion after the discussion we are still brothers and friends khayamat ke din tak hum dost hai aur bhai hai so all those objections they don't hurt me because i know I, first i had difficulty with those passages but the lord helped me to know his truth so it's okay now as a christian i solemnly declare my faith my personal faith and as a representative of the christian community i solemnly declare my faith that bible is the word of god 100% we christians believe that the bible is the word of god that's what we believe i'm not asking anyone else to believe it you are free to believe whatever you want whatever your conscience says right your conscience may tell you otherwise your common sense may tell you otherwise but as i am convinced as a representative of christian community in this debate i declare my faith that i 100% believe that bible is the word of god in spite of all these objections raised and i will tell you certain very good reasons for that dear brothers and sisters i'll be very brief of course on each of these points i'm going to share before you a different uh, workshop uh, or different session of discussion needs to be held but still i'll carry on with whatever i have in my heart first and foremost we believe that the bible is the word of god for the first and foremost reason that the bible the way the bible was written is unique the way the bible was written is very unique my dear brothers and sisters 
the bible was written 1600 years over the period of 1600 years by more than 40 prophets living in different regions different locations in different civilizations and different languages and all the books as my brother pointed out the catholic bible has 73 and the protestant bible has 66 books to some people that's a big problem for me there is no such problem at all because if you can kindly get a catholic bible i quote a reference from the protestant bible it is exactly the same it has the same meaning there also john 3:16 is god so loved the world in protestant version and catholic version also like was with every verse so there's no problem at all the bible 66 books even those extra seven books are regarded as apocrypha non canonical they are not canonized or canonical that is according to the standards but still the catholic church wanted to retain in the holy bible it doesn't do any harm even for them 66 books are only canonical not 73 the extra seven when they are not canonical why have it said the protestant church why not have it said the catholic church so they have 73 we have 66 but no clash at all catholic bible protestant bible gives the same message so brothers the bible was written over a period of 1600 years by more than 40 prophets yet there is a scarlet thread of message running throughout the 66 books from genesis to revelation the single message runs through all the pages of the bible i will give you an illustration there is a poet writing a drama as a dramatist a play writer writing a drama in india he writes certain portion of the drama and he dies after 200 years another person born in africa and he takes up and he continues from the point left by that earlier dramatist the rest of the story he writes he dies again and some other prophet some other poet is born in america he takes up and he writes the rest of the story so 40 dramatists wrote the same drama continuation of the same story and this requires a person who lived in all the places throughout this 1600 years that could only be god my common sense tells when such a wonderful uniformity is there throughout the 66 books it could be done only by god not by a mere human intelligence that is the first and foremost thing my dear brothers and sisters and secondly secondly i would like to share with you the bible has fulfilled prophecies in the quran surah number 373 says allah is all knowing and only allah knows the future and everything in the universe we take that name allah as synonymous with the word god we have no objection and only god as, as we know in the bible the lord jehovah only knows the future in the quran allah alone knows the future so you cannot have two people knowing the future you can only have one god who knows the future so whether you call it call him by the name allah or yehova we have no objection we agree that there is one person who knows the future and the past and every secret thing in the whole universe we human beings do not know what happens tomorrow what happens after 10 minutes or 5 minutes or next minute we do not know but only god can tell the future as such bible has hundreds of prophecies exactly fulfilled 
I can prove this, but I need more time. I need more time. Thank you. Bible has fulfilled prophecies. I can even tell that the recent unfortunate multinational invasion on Iraq with which we don't agree and sad for what happened. We don't agree with what President Bush has done. We don't agree. And many Americans don't agree with what Bush has done. So I, I seriously object to what Bush has done against Iraq. <laughs> Thank you. But this unfortunate incident also was foretold in the book of Jeremiah 500 years before Christ. That all the multinationals, they come and invade against Iraq. It is prophesied in the Bible. Like this, there are so many fulfilled prophecies. So it has to be the word of Allah or the word of God. Or else a human being cannot tell the future exactly. That is our second reason to believe that the Bible is the word of God. Thirdly, we believe the Bible is the word of God because no statement of the Bible is proven to be anti-scientific or unscientific. People may show certain scriptures, this is not scientific, this is not logical or anything like that. But the Bible doesn't have a single statement which is against the proven science. The fact that Galileo Galilei, the inventor of telescope, when he said that the universe is not geocentric, the center of the universe is not the earth, but the sun is the center of the universe, and all the planets revolve around the sun. When Galileo said it, actually he was agreeing with Copernicus, who said it before Galileo said it. He accepted the Copernican theory of uh, the solar-centric universe. The church, Roman Catholic Church, this Galileo was an Italian. The Roman Catholic Church found him guilty declared him guilty of heresy or falling away from the teachings of the church. In Galileo's day, church was very powerful. So they have punished him, they put him under arrest. And later he was put under house arrest. And in his old age, he died of slow fever. And many people take this as a proof that Christianity is unscientific. But what I would uh, what I would say is the punishment imposed upon Galileo was not because of any plain statement of the Bible but because of the misinterpretation of the church leaders. Even the Quran says that the church leaders are misinterpreting the scripture. It is always the problem. The scripture is not wrong but the understanding of some Christians was wrong. They thought the earth was the center of the universe. So there was ego problem. They wanted to punish Galileo. But the Bible was not the reason for that. I said, the Bible was written by an intelligence, superhuman intelligence, who lived for more than 1,600 years in all the areas, guiding all the 40 prophets to write the same story, same line of story continuing throughout the 40 prophets and 66 books. And secondly, I said, we believe the Bible is the word of God because it has accurately foretold the future events. The fulfilled prophecy for us is a conclusive proof that Bible is the word of God. Thirdly, we believe Bible is the word of God because there is no single statement that goes against the proven science. And fifth and my strongest reason 
The fifth and my strongest reason is that the glorious Quran tells us to believe in the Bible. That is my strongest reason. The glorious Quran. I call it a glorious Quran. My Christian brothers and sisters may object to this vocabulary. How can you being a Christian call Quran the glorious Quran? There may be some people objecting to this, but I consciously call it, yes, I get the signal. I consciously call it the glorious Quran because the Quran testifies about my Lord Jesus Christ that He is Ruhullah, He is the Spirit of God, He is the Word of God. The Quran testifies about me as a Christian that I am a truth lover, I understand the truth, I love the Muslims, I am not proud. The Quran says it. Christians are not proud, they are meek, they are loving. And the Quran, in many places, it says, believe in the Bible, believe in the Bible. So I will read out just two verses in the Quran. The Quran says, O Muslims, Surah number 2, 136. The Quran says, O Muslims, we believe, say O Muslims, we believe in Allah and the olden scriptures. I will read out from the glorious Quran. I, I, I take just two more minutes. Kindly bear with me. Surah number 2, 136, I am reading out please. Say O Muslims, we believe in Allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and that which Moses and Jesus received and that which the prophets received from their Lord we make no distinction between any of them this is the word of Allah and there is one more verse, thank you, one more verse in surah number 384 in surah number 384 Allah tells to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Surah number 3, 84, I am reading out please. This will be the last uh, quotation. Say, O Muhammad, say, O Muhammad, we believe in Allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and that which was what saved unto Moses and Jesus and the prophets from the, their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them because the Quran, the glorious Quran itself tells the Muslims and even the great prophet Muhammad to believe in the scriptures given before Muhammad came. That is the Old Testament and New Testament. Injil mein yakhin karna, Torah mein yakhin karna. So I respect the Holy Quran. I respect the Holy Quran. I obey the Quran in accepting the Bible as the word of God. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Now, inshallah, we shall be having the second session the second session where Pastor Ophir will speak first for 15 minutes then Brother Imran will speak for 15 more minutes. I request Pastor Ophir to start the second session with his address for 15 minutes. Pastor Ophir. Dear brothers and sisters, now I would come to the objections and questions raised by my beloved and learned brother, Brother Imran. First of all, I would uh, make a note that there are, according to Brother Imran, there are difficult passages, there are unclean words, there are, uh, I think he is so reverent not to use that word, but uh, almost like a pornographic language. He was so reverent that he didn't use that word. But uh, some dirty stories and dirty uh, words used in the Bible. So this cannot be. 
the word of god that's what he says firstly i would explain that the law was given almost 400 years after the so called sin of incest act of incest was committed at the at the time of lot and his daughters it was 2000 years before christ and it was 500 years before moses the bible tells us when the law was not given sin will not be attributed and there will be no sin sin will not be charged again man cannot be charged as committing sin where there was no law because there must be the law and when you break the law it is a sin and the law came 500 years after lot's incident and 400 years after the jude and his daughter in law's incident and the second thing is the bible doesn't commend it the bible doesn't recommend it the bible doesn't appreciate it the bible doesn't say it is a good thing and you do it the bible only records the sin and wrong things committed by those people to what is the lesson he say uh, the brother imran imran has asked me what the lesson is that god is so impartial that he records the sin of even his prophets that is a lesson for me i am a servant of god i left my job in ecil i have been serving the lord depending upon him for now, for all my financial needs for 26 years i have built up more than 350 churches people consider me as a great servant of jesus christ a theologian so many things but if i commit a sin in my secret life the lord records it and on the day of judgment that will come out that is the lesson so the bible doesn't appreciate or recommend or comment on those uh, filthy incidents it only is to create a fear in us if god is speaking so openly about the sin of lot lot's daughters sin of judah and also sin of noah and other things sin of david the prophet if the lord is not concealing the sin of david or other prophets he will not hide my sin also so that is the lesson and one more thing bastard that word means illegitimate children and that word is used to describe the spiritual stature spiritual condition of the nation of israel because if a child is born out of the legitimate relationship of holy wedlock a child is illegitimately conceived in the mother's womb he will resemble not his father he will resemble like the neighbor padosi ka jaisa dikhta hai ladka this child doesn't look like the father so called father he carries the name of the father but looks like the padosi the neighbor so the people of israel were taking the name of jehova but behaving like shaitan they have all the bad qualities of shaitan people of israel but they say we are the children of jehova if you are my children you should be thinking and talking and behaving like me you say yourself that you are my children but you behave like the devil so you are illegitimate children that is the reason god used that word and whatever the word god uses there is a metaphorical meaning to it there is a metaphorical meaning so that is the thing i thirdly i know all the muslim arguments and my brother imran knows all the christian arguments i know what he is going to say and he knows what i am going to say 
so rightly when uh, the irf has printed the publicity for this uh, this debate debate discussion they said it it is edutainment a wisely coined word educative and entertainment i think you wrote it isn't it so it educates us and also entertains us so it is uh, i love my brother i know what he's going to say and he knows what i'm going to say none of us is uh, so anadi utna masum nahi hai so brother imran uh, after after hearing him i love him more so brothers one thing i will tell you there is a notion how many minutes brother two minutes three minutes five Six and a half minutes. Six. Oh, thank you. I have a lot of time. So, so there is a notion in the Islamic community. Actually, because I have little more time than needed, I would say Islamic culture. Be, I am the fida. Thank you. I am the Hyderabadi. Who, boy? I'm a man from Hyderabad, and uh, there are so many good things in Islam. And I, I'm frank enough to say, and even my Christian brothers and sisters have to uh, learn many things from Islamic culture because one of the thank you one of that uh, many important lessons is maintaining a healthy distance between the women and men. that's very good that's something to be learned from islam and do could be sikhna hai hum sikhne ke liye taiyar hai as my brother mansoor has introduced me i am always able to teach and willing to learn a good teacher is an ever learner